All right, so I really didn't think this would work, so I didn't have the camera running, uh, and I'm too scared to put it back together for the camera. <laughs> so I'll just tell you what I did. Uh, so I took the faceplate off this uh, hub motor, stuck it in the vise, and then, I don't wanna get this too close, but essentially I, I had it here and I just pulled it straight off. Um, these are some pretty, some pretty beefy magnets, so I really didn't think it would come off, but once you got, I don't know, a quarter of an inch away, it lost its hold and just slid right off. Uh, getting it back together is gonna be interesting. I'll need to figure out some way to gently lower it on without, you know, getting my fingers in the way and destroying the magnets in the process. So let's see, so we've got the inner core, which is attached to the shaft uh, and all the wiring. Um, originally I was, I was just thinking, oh, this is a perfect shaft. I'll just use this, you know, pop a, a little pulley onto it until I remembered Right, all the electronics go through the shaft. So we need somehow to get a pulley of some sort, either machined or something like this, onto this case somehow. A few ideas, there's this face plate which comes off, this is aluminum, and it's got a, a bearing on the inside, and this basically just protects everything, keeps it covered. Uh, there are a variety of drilled holes already, so what I could do is fabricate a new, new plate, and have that plate include a pulley. I could fabricate a pulley on top of this. Uh, the only thing is it'll be contending for space uh, against you know where this bolts onto some support. So ideally, well here, before I flip it over, here's what the inside looks like. You can see it's just a, a single bearing on the inside and then some permanent magnets all the way around the outside. Uh, so the other thing I could do is machine this top part flat and bolt a pulley on here somehow or put a shaft through it. Uh, there's a little bit of space for hitting the bearing underneath this. I think this all is decorative, so this can probably all just get flattened right off. So that's an option. Um, I could always, you know, just use the outside as a pulley and do pulley to something else and have a two-stage system. I'd like to avoid that if I could. So you have some options, I'll noodle over it and see, see what makes sense given the stock that I have. So this is gonna be going too fast, just by a bit. Um, I need it close to two or 300 RPM, and the lowest I can go is 400 RPM on the vertical. And I'm too lazy to bust out the horizontal. And for whatever reason, my bandsaw just died on me. So we're gonna attempt this. Hopefully it's not too scary.
All right, new plan. That drill's terrifying. You can see it rocking my table, which probably means the table needs tightening. Uh, we're gonna bust out an end mill, I think. So this is interesting. Um, my DRO has been sitting ostensibly at zero, zero since I got this thing chucked up. And as you can see, the Y has drifted over the last day or two to negative 40, um, <laughs> which it most certainly is not at negative 40 right now. So I think, well, I'm not really sure what's going on. There's some kind of instability. Either the, the wires are not shielded. I'd read somewhere online that uh, these cheap scales might need a pull-up resistor. Uh, inside the scale itself to help with stability. Um, maybe the rails are bent a little bit and that accumulates air over time, but seeing as it's literally just been sitting here and I've not been actuating it at all, I think that's doubtful. So it's probably just some kind of digital problem. Uh, part of that I noticed, if I pan over to the piece on the X side, uh, <laughs> this is not centered either. Uh, there's more space here than over there. Uh, and that, I'm almost certain, is the DRO's problem. Because I edge found and then did the one half function, uh, and that was it. So it really should be right in the center, and it is certainly not. Uh, not an issue for this. It's not going to be high RPM. It's not going to cause problems. But it is potentially why I've had some, some problems in the past if my DRO is lying to me. So I think that might be the next thing I do after this is uh, do a little bit of troubleshooting on what's going on with with that system. Ta -da. Oh man, that's really thin. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let's try to punch it first. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is not going to go well. Right, let's make this a little lighter. <laughs> oh, that was better.
Huh. How about that? Okay, let's take it to the mill. So here we are. Uh, it's a bit of a battle, and it is not the most beautiful thing in the world, but I think it'll do for this situation. Uh, a lot of lessons learned. <laughs> so yeah, so the cast pulley is seated on this uh, adapter block, which is then bolted into the housing. Um, lessons learned, right? So this adapter plate should have been a lot bigger, uh, or rather a lot wider. Uh, I thought this would be sufficient because I thought this top part was quite a bit thicker than it actually is. Uh, but I guess after milling it down, and I think it's probably just uneven casting because there's different parts that look like they're different thicknesses. Um, it's actually pretty thin, which is not great for you know the strength of these two two bolts going through. Uh, there's only uh, I don't know maybe three or four threads that actually catch on the underside. So as you can see, well, I just missed the bearing. So that's a big problem um, in that these, the adapter plate, if it had been larger, you know, we could have put the bolts out here and then put some nuts on it and everything would have been okay. But as it is, uh, I just missed the bearing, which means I can't really put a bolt because the bolt would stick up and hit the bearing. And then the, uh, the stator would also hit it. Um, so what we have is a situation where there's a bunch of threads on half of it, which I don't think really contributes much strength. And the rest of the thread, you know, there's maybe two or three, maybe four threads worth down at the bottom, uh, which is not super great. Uh, and you can see here, this is where I, I punched through earlier <laughs> with the center punch. And this is really thin, maybe like, oh, I don't know, a couple tenths worth. It's really, really much thinner than I expected. The rest of it up there is uh, quite a bit thicker, uh, so I think it's just an uneven casting. In case you're not aware, these are, well, they're called hub drives or hub motors, and they're used actually for these, the hoverboards that you've seen people potentially flying around on, or maybe in the news catching on fire. The battery charging circuit's a little, a little janky, but the motors themselves, these are basically wheels, right? You saw the wheel that I cut off earlier, and these things are strong enough to direct drive a human around, right? So between the two of them, it can move 150 to 300 pounds of mass direct drive, which is pretty impressive. And hobbyists have checked these out. Peak wattage, I think it's 10 to 12 Newton meters of torque, which is really insane for such a small and cheap motor. Like this was 30 bucks on, on eBay. I think you get them for like $15 used. Uh, so it's a really, really torquey little motor. Um, and so I, I wanted to use these for another project where I need that torque uh, and I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on expensive servo drives. But, you know, you get this kind of funky hub motor design uh, where it's not quite ideal. Right, so next steps. Uh, I need to build a a base for this machine uh, because it <laughs> comes with this tripod, but the tripod's really, really sketchy uh, and not at all sufficiently stable to use. So I'll build, I don't know, some two by four or plywood contraption to mount this. Um, and then I need to build a platform for the motor. All right, so we've got the pulley that's mounted on this old hand crank. The belt will go on it, something like this and then the belt will attach over here, like so. Uh, I'll probably get a smaller belt. This looks a bit too big and prefer it for a little closer. Uh, but that then will drive the hand crank and the hand crank will drive the needle. Um, hopefully this doesn't rip itself apart. If it does, I'll, I don't know, drill out the center part and make a new adapter. 
something uh, or maybe just a whole new housing for the magnets that's doable as well. And then the machine itself just needs a fair amount of cleaning. Uh, so it's covered in cosmoline. Uh, the castings are really rough. Uh, you can almost feel sand still in here. So the whole thing needs to be stripped down, cleaned. Um, there's a lot of sharp edges, uh, which in addition to being bad for leather work or anything else you're doing, it's, it's also rather painful if you just touch these sharp edges. So the whole thing needs to get filed down. Uh, there's a bunch of places that could really use oil or grease. Uh, there's some oil holes. Grease needs to be packed in here in the, the rack. Uh, this whole thing probably needs to get torn apart and sanded out nicely. Maybe do a, a lap on the inside uh, and then re-oil it. Uh, so yeah, the whole machine needs some work. I'll probably paint it uh, as well while i am got it torn apart. Uh, I probably won't show a lot of that because honestly it's not going to be very interesting watching me file and grease everything. Uh, I'll probably show the building of you know, the last adapter part that goes here, because uh, we'll need to take, let's see, the stator and make some kind of uh, something to hold on to the spindle here. Uh, and then this will be socketed against some kind of metal, something or another that's then also bolted onto the same platform. And so this will stay stationary and the rotor will spin and drive the hand crank. And then I think I'll also, turn a, a wood handle or something to replace the old hand crank, which was just this cheap piece of plastic. And that'll go on right there. That's what this bolt's for. So yeah, not too bad. Um, definitely need a lathe. This, this pulley was not pleasant at all to do <laughs> uh, on the rotary table. And then obviously this thing was not great either. I potentially, if I had had a, a lathe, I could have turned a groove in this um, and then done like a two pulley reduction instead of having this flying out here like this. But it is what it is. We'll see how it works. This might rip itself apart. Uh, if it does, we'll just figure something else out at that point. Uh, yeah, catch you all later. Thanks for watching.